it's out of jail, he's going to have to fight for his pension. So I guess there was some corruption there. I think one just that. came in. Another email just came in oh. that you covered up there. Something okay. Sorry. more recent, perhaps, on the topic we were, we're doing kicking mouse. around a little bit ago. We're, doing, we're having mouse fights here <laughs> at, the, at the show. All right. The subject line is Walmart. It says, here's my statement. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, it might be from Melissa, which is the second uh, smartest woman in the world. Uh, no, never mind. It is not. It is from another person. It is from the fourth smartest woman in the Unranked. world. Unranked. All right. No, she. <laughs> Fourth. Okay. It says, here's my statement. I love Walmart in, ex- in capital letters and exclamation points. It says, Walmart is visited by me almost every single day, whether it be a grocery item, household, garden, and anything else. They have in a one-stop shop building almost every item most people have on their list and is convenient as can be to do so. And the help are friendly and go out of their way to please. If they're disgruntled about their pay, one wouldn't know it by the overall attitude expressed on a daily basis by these people. Stop slamming P- Walmart. Try it. You might like it. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. the other side of the story. Right. And the, I guess uh, there are two very crystal clear and uh, 100% right sides of the story. Mm-hmm. One that this listener says that it's a great store to go to. You know, in, uh, in the past decade, I've been to a Walmart because they do have one thing that you can't get anywhere else. And so I was going there. Now, I won't go there now. But uh, they still strongly, strongly disfavor women when it comes to promotion and still put uh, most of their employees qualify for welfare because they're paid so low. And, of course, they still displace and uh, destroy downtowns and smaller businesses and local businesses and all the while supporting. And they really raise up uh, overseas uh, businesses and Chinese products and so on. So to that end, I mean, Walmart is the worst thing that ever happened to America, and therefore I won't shop there. But if that doesn't bother you, I invite folks to shop there. Well, that's rather an unfair assessment, I think. I mean, competition is is something that we thrive on in this country. If you can't compete, you go out of business. What what, what happened to the moral imperative? Well, I'm talking about the small downtown businesses for a minute. You didn't let me finish my thought. Sorry. These small downtown businesses, mom and pops, were based on an entirely different business model that they weren't able to adapt from in terms of being able to compete against Walmart now. You can't compete against a big store like that on your own. You need to have a unified business district to compete against them. Are you listening, Coles Hardware? Oops, well, no, wait, I, they're thriving. No, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, but but they ha- they are part of a business district. If you look, the Coles and Sealands Grove is part of a good business district. The Coles and Sunbury is in an area where there are other businesses that are open. It's not like there are a lot of vacant shops, but it's hard for a, a shoe store, let's say, to compete against a big box retailer. It's hard for uh, any small independent business to compete against them. Maybe they should be given some kind of tax breaks. I don't know. But, I mean, I, I, you can't fault Walmart for being competitive. Right. As long as you ignore the morality of it, absolutely. I agree. What's immoral about being competitive? You'll have to tell me that after the break. The things I just stated. Dave, you know what to do. Wait six minutes and dial again. We have a caller standing by, but we'll talk to him after the hour. You're listening to News Radio 1070 WKOK Sunbury WKOK News Time. It is 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. CBS News, I'm Frank Setapani. The Labor Department says it counted more claims for unemployment benefits last week, 302,000 in all. That was up from a 14-year low the week before. Economist Naraman Berovich suspects it's nothing more than a one-week blip. This is not a bad number. We're still very close to a 14-year low on initial unemployment claims. So in that sense, we're not terribly worried about it. Outplacement specialist John Challenger says corporate layoff announcements shot past 45,000 this month. Most of the increase came from one second. Of the economy. We've seen heavy layoffs in the tech sector this year. Computer and electronics were heavy this month, but they've been that way uh, for much of the year. Microsoft announced 18,000 layoffs this month. Breaking news from Wisconsin, the state Supreme Court has upheld a controversial law that took away the collective bargaining rights of most public workers. That law triggered mass protest when it was passed three years ago and led to a failed effort to recall Governor Scott Walker. Overseas, Israel is calling up more reservists. A sign the ground war against Hamas in Gaza will be expanding. Prime Minister Netanyahu says it won't end until Israel wipes out the threat posed by Hamas tunnels. CBS's Barry Peterson watched an Israeli gunboat open fire on targets near Gaza City. There's quite a bit of firing now. You can hear. We don't know what they're using. Maybe 50 cal weapons, maybe something stronger. They've done this attack before. This is the second time around. We're just trying to stay out of the way. 
The U.N. says the death toll from an Ebola outbreak in West Africa has climbed past 700. Ebola kills most of the people it infects, but two American aid workers who contracted the virus in Liberia seem to be doing better. One of them is Nancy Wrightbowl. Her son Jeremy says she's being treated in isolation to avoid spreading the disease. Dad's visits with mom right now are through window at the home where mom is isolated. He's in a containment suit even there. Summer vacation is calling and Congress is in a rush to hit the road. Live to Washington and CBS News correspondent Peter Mayer. Frank, this is a case of so much to do in so little time. Senators and House members hope for last-minute votes on Veterans Department reforms and a short-term fix on a needed highway funding bill. But action on the immigration and border issue will likely fall into the unfinished business aisle. The sharp partisan divide between the Republican-led House and the Democratic-controlled Senate has this Congress headed to becoming the least productive in history when it comes to passing bills that actually become law. A small plane pilot knew she was in trouble when that plane wasn't gaining altitude on takeoff. I'm full throttle. I'm full throttle. Full, seven full throttle. Turn back to the field if you're able. I'm going down. The plane clipped a target store, but the pilot steered it away from main entrances toward a loading dock where it crashed. An 80-year-old woman aboard the plane was killed, and the pilot suffered serious injuries, but no one on the ground was hurt. The financial markets were jolted by news overnight of Argentina's second debt default in a dozen years. Right now, S&P futures are down 15 points. This is CBS News. Hi, this is Dennis Miller. Memory loss is about more than forgetting where you left your car keys. It's real, and it happens more and more as we age. Researchers have discovered a protein in jellyfish that can help supplement those brain support proteins we lose naturally as we age. And you'll find it in Prevagen, an over-the-counter supplement that's been clinically tested to improve memory. Support your brain with Prevagen, the best-selling memory product on the market. No prescription necessary, available at Walgreens, Rite Aid, and CVS. All across the U.S., people are hearing this. And once people hear it, they stop what they're doing and break into a dance and head down to their nearest staple store. Why? Cultural phenomenon? A new trend? A flash mob? Let's slow the track down and play it backwards and see if we get any clues. Now get notebooks for 17 cents, index cards for 48 cents, and Nobis tablets for $49. Well, that explains it. Staples. This back to school, make more happen for less. Then it applies to store staples.com for details. Operation Chocolate Cream Pie is underway on the Korean Peninsula. CBS's Shannon Van Sant has the story from Beijing. South Korean activists have launched balloons into North Korea carrying chocolate cream pies. Factories in the country's joint industrial zone have been offering the pies to North Korean workers, who then began to trade them throughout the country, spawning a chocolate pie black market. The North Korean government banned the pies, prompting the balloon launch. South Korean activists often send balloons across the border containing anti-North Korea leaflets. Shannon Van Sant, CBS News, Beijing. Free speech isn't always free. In Philadelphia, a federal judge has dismissed the lawsuit filed by a Bucks County teacher who was fired for calling students disengaged, lazy whiners. The judge said the blog post didn't provide enough value to the debate over school reform to outweigh the district's right to maintain an efficient educational environment. Frank Setapani, CBS News. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the total transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-535-3847. 1-888-535-3847. That's one 535 3847 one 535 News Radio 1070 WKOK presents On the Mark. It's a chance to voice your opinion on the events that affect life in the Susquehanna Valley. Call 1-800-795-9565 or email onthemark at wkok.com. Now, here are your hosts for On the Mark, 
Mark Lawrence, and Joe McGranahan. Greetings and welcome on board the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show. It is entitled On the Mark. I am Mark Lawrence. Very glad that you are there. We're glad that we are on the webcam. It was busted earlier, but we fixed the tube. We had a repairman come to our home and put a new tube in, and now the TV works. We were frozen. <laughs> right. We were frozen in place, and our audio was... Uh, gar- the air conditioning is working very well, right? We had garbalization, but now we got it fixed a vacation, and so we really appreciate that. So the webcam is up and running. Uh, check it out at WKOK.com, or check out the uh, last hour of the show. that will be on a YouTube archive coming up later this morning. Groninger Insurance toll-free line is open, one 800 795 965. That's 1 800 795 965. Groninger Insurance Agency, Front and Duke Streets, Northumberland, open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5, and Friday, and 9 to 4 30. They have business, flood, home, car, business, car, flood, liability, one day insurance. Car. It's only a broken record. We have to <laughs> smack you in the head to get you to move on. Well, they have a lot of types of insurance within those uh, zones. So they have uh, 16 different types of insurance, and I just named uh, eight of them. Groningerinsurance.com is their main website. A Lenape Solar email in basket is wide open. You simply email on the market, WKOK.com. Lenape Solar is uh, located at 140 South 2nd Street in Sunbury. And believe it or don't, they have a solar array display there. You can see the HVAC systems that they sell. They'll give you words about the commercial lighting audits that they can perform at your company. And they have solar panels. Some generate electricity, some generate heat, uh, some generate more heat than light, and that's one of Joe's favorite phrases, so they can help you out with that at lanapysolar.com. And the Sunbury Motor Company can help you out if you need a new vehicle or you're interested in a very, very, very high-quality used automobile. Boy, can they help you out at Sunbury Motors. They literally have thousands of vehicles at their disposal, and about 300 of which are on display, either on North 4th Street or at the Kia dealership. If you haven't seen the Kias lately, you haven't seen a high quality award-winning consumer reports recommended automobile that gets a lot of miles to the gallon and lasts a lot of years so very very good stuff there sunburymotors.com we will read some news headlines in a moment but as uh, we requested uh, dave uh, hit the redial button six minutes after he had hit it the first time so good morning sir you're on the mark good morning i was listening to your reasons why you shouldn't shop at walmart but by the same token uh you might ought to look in a wise store uh, they pay lower wages than Walmart. They've put, at least here in my area, they put at least four grocery stores out of business. And, uh, you know, if you go to the dog treat section, you'll be hard pressed to find something that isn't made in China. So, you know, before you rally too much about Walmart, I hope you're not shopping at Wises either. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a point worth considering, and I think that you could say that uh, the wealth of Wises stays in this part of the U.S. You know, the beauty of uh, Walmart is you're still taking a dollar and shipping it to either the stockholders of Walmart or, you know, Missouri. But you're doing the same thing at Wise. There's nothing wrong with what Wise does. There's nothing wrong with what Walmart does. I think you have a greater chance of seeing greater employment since Wises is based in this area of a dollar that you spend here staying here. If you go to Walmart, you have a greater chance of the dollar you spend either or leaving well, the it still stays in the United States. It stays in Bentonville, Arkansas, but it doesn't stay in our area. But I'm sure they benefit Bentonville to the same extent that Wise benefits our area. Dave. Well, by the same token, you know, okay, the employees at Wise's are making lower wages than the employees at Walmart. And your prices at Wise a lot of times are more expensive than Walmart. So, you know, uh, I think Walmart's doing a pretty good job with what they're working with. That if they can give you a lower price and uh, pay their employees more, that would be more incentive to shop there than it would be to shop at Wise's, who's charging you more but paying their employees less. Well, until what? they drive them out of business, in which case, then we only have one source for everything we need, and they can pretty much charge what they want. Well, Wise's also uses a lot more local meats and produce than does uh, Walmart. So to that end, uh, there's another advantage there. But I think I think you're right, Dave. It is a conversation you have to have, and this is not just a either or, you know, like a one or the other uh, situation. This is a complex uh, topic. You know, is as Joe Apley said, is helping Bentonville, Arkansas, uh, as advantageous as helping the broad Central Pennsylvania region. And I think that's a question you can go ahead and ask. If you live in Bentonville, well, I think they'll have the answer for you. Help us. Well, but that's that's the thing. You know, before everybody jumps on the bandwagon condemning Walmart, if I look at the other places, and okay, great, it, it's helping Northumberland and Sunbury. What about the rest of the state around? 
Right. You know, um, or Kmart you know, or Target. You'd have to ask the same question about those. Yeah, stores. you know, when you when you go to the other parts of the state where there's a wide store that's put two or three smaller stores out of business, well, okay, how's that helping that area? If the money's going back to the Sunbury Northumberland area. All right, we got so, you, Dave. You know, those people can make the same argument against Wise's as you're making against Walmart. All right, we're going to put you down as the fifth smartest man in the world for that one. Well, where do I rank? Because I believe what part of what he's saying is correct. You're unranked. <laughs> I'm unranked. But you'll, you'll be on the list. <laughs> well, Thank you, Dave. Say. Congratulations, Dave, on your ranking. <laughs> Uh, the, bot the bottom line, as I'm going to say here, is that we're talking about competition. Mm -hmm. We're talking about companies that create, go into business to do a certain thing. Walmart to sell a wide variety of products. Watch markets to sell food and things you need around the house every day. Each company has its own business model. Wise Markets chooses to focus more on groceries and food items, and, you know, their stores sell beer, some of them. They have um, uh, delis and things like that. Walmart, on the other hand, is packaged stuff. You know, the meat there isn't necessarily, there's no fresh butcher standing there. Yeah, it's, it's full of argon. It comes in packaged. Well, I don't know what it's full of. It's Pop good. package is full of argon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. You know, I'm not going to argue the environmental aspects of it with you because we're talking about competition. At least I am talking about competition. So you create your business plan, you go into business, and you hope that what you produce or sell is what the American people, or at least the people in your hometown or the area where you're doing business, want. To the extent that you provide what they want, you do well. To the extent that you don't, you go out of business or you struggle. And I think that Walmart has certainly demonstrated that it's capable of being uh, the provider of a wide range of good or certain goods and services to people all over the country. Target to a certain extent, Walmart or Kmart to a certain extent does the same type of thing. But Walmart does it bigger and better than any of them. Now, does that mean their business practices are more sharp? If I fault Walmart, I would fault them for the sharpness of their business practices. The fact that I do believe they put pressure on, retail, on suppliers to keep prices low. And everyone will tell you, whether it's right or wrong, I'm not sure, but if you go to some of the other stores that specialize in selling TV and appliances, they'll tell you, well, the, it may be a brand name at Walmart, but it's not the same high quality as the set they sell somewhere else for more money. So they manufacture things to a price. And if price is your concern, and you're, you can only afford a $300 32-inch TV set, you know, maybe it has a few f less features than the others, but that satisfies you. What's wrong with that? Well, I, I love what you say about competition, and I think you're right. I don't, you definitely didn't say anything that's wrong, but I think for those of us where the dollar bill is not the deciding factor, that morals and values and faith and humanity and fairness and well, what do you really supporting know local communities, if those are more important to you, then you would never go near a Walmart. But how do you know anything about Walmart? Walmart's morals or Wise Market's morals. Mine. I, I don't. Mine. No, mine. your morals. I won't I shop there because because of what you believe. I think it's immoral to support them. But why? Because uh, because of the reasons I stated. What's they, your biblical justification? They, they, they dis. Well, this uh, my faith informs my morals. It doesn't okay. dictate them. But in any event, I think that uh, they disfavor women. They disfavor the poor. They make it difficult for uh, local individuals in the communities uh, to compete. And environmentally, it's, it, they're uh, you know importers of so many things. And just in terms of the footprint that they employ in a local geography, uh, that it. I think they have a, a very uh, a negative impact just in terms of the runoff of water and the, and the pollution and so on. Let's read some of the emails that okay. relate to this. Uh, the single smartest woman in all of the planet says, Mark, I live along the river outside Danville, and yesterday around 5.30 or 6.00, oh, this is not on that particular topic, but I will <laughs> read not. that. I do know the answer to that, and we'll talk about it in a minute. And uh, let's see. Uh, on the topic of Walmart, uh, one of my friends taking me to task, and this is the fourth smartest woman in the world, says, Mark, that remark about promoting women isn't fair at all. You don't shop there, so how would you really know? I see many women at our Walmart in a lead position, and I have personally spoken to a manager, and guess what? She was female. Right. Uh, I've right. seen a female well, manager at Walmart. She, I go shop there Sunday mornings usually, early, when there's not a crowd. Isn't that strange? You go to church and Walmart on the same day. No, I go <laughs> that's to church irony. Saturday. I'm a Catholic. We can go Saturday night. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> irony. I've seen your wife there Saturday nights, too. Yeah, I was there last I Saturday. Know. I was with her. Uh, Dave, thanks for calling in. You're on the mark. Well, I just had a quick question for you now that you're on the female end of it. How many female general managers has WKOK had? 
None. Uh, well, our vice president is a female. Oh, we only have one. Are you discriminating against women then, or because you had not? No, no. We have many, oh, many women gosh. in leadership positions. No, no, here. no. Okay, but how many general managers? Well, there have only been about seven general <laughs> managers in the history of the years. company. <laughs> yeah, they stay 30 okay, years. Okay, but you're discriminating against women by not making any of them a general manager then. There's only one general manager in a radio station. Right. And it's yeah, a 50 50 year. shot. It could be a woman. But the only vice president that we have at the moment is a woman. Our, the uh, Lois's title was? She was chairman. Chair, chairman of the board, mm -hmm. or chair of the board. So uh, we do have women in leadership position, and more than half the staff is women. So I think if you well, want to use WKO. By the same token, if you look at Walmart, if you go to a Walmart store, you'll find that more than half the staff of a Walmart store is women also. No, I'm, yeah, but th I just mean leadership, yeah. So. Well, our leaders are women. And I think, you, you know, Dave, uh, anything else, Dave? <laughs> no, that's pretty, that's about it. But it's just, you know, whenever, whenever uh, there's, there's, somebody starts in about, you know, there's no women in this position or that position, you know, but then if you check other places, well, okay, there's never been a woman in that position there either, but yet it's okay for this place to be prejudiced against women or not promote women, but yet the place, the other place, why it's not, a, it's, that doesn't count there. Okay. And well, we're probably not perfect yet, but we do need a thing. we do need a GM. Now we actually don't have a general manager at the moment. That's not a title that's uh, vacant. But uh, when it is, I hope we promote a woman, and we certainly do have some qualified women on staff. Thank you, Dave. It is an excellent point. I I agree with you. Well, women like, have a long way to go at a lot of places. Walmart is just one of look them. Look at the mayor's conference. A large percentage of the mayors in the state are women now. At least the ones who came to the conference. Really? Yes. Quite a few female mayors across Pennsylvania, and there are. Where? I think. Huh? Name one. Uh, Marysville, for example, Mayor Deb Trent. Around here. Marysville. It's right down the road. Oh, on 11 and 15. Right. Uh, Deb's been the mayor down there for a number of years. And the other women me. mayors around here? Well, I mean, I'd have to look at my list again. I don't remember the mayors of every borough in this count and this commonwealth off the top of my head, but I know there were at least 20 female mayors at our conference. Yeah, there's no, there's not any around here. Um, oh, how Mrs. about Judy Wagner in Lewisburg? There you go. And Mrs. Brocious in... Uh, Gretchen Brocious yes, in Northumberland. Yes, in Northumberland would be it. The late Gretchen Brocious. She was a wonderful man. We haven't had one in Sunbury yet. We're ready for one in Sunbury. So you, there there goes your argument. Am I, <laughs> oh, is my argument shot? Oh, dear. It is. All right. This particular email is from the smartest woman in the world, and it says, Mark, I live along the river outside Danville. Yesterday about 5.30 or 6 o'clock, a plane with four props was flying along the river going towards Sunbury at about 200 feet above the ground. Do you know what that was? Yes, I do. It's the B-17. It's somewhere in the valley, and it's uh, in our valley in anticipation of Tuesday's funeral. I don't know where it went, though. I'm sorry to say. Maybe if somebody knows where it landed, uh, tell us. We do know it was the first uh, visit by the pilot of uh, examining this area, and it is the B-17. probably said it's going to land these you know, accounts I've read and heard say the plane is going to land on the island in Sunbury, so he's probably flying down the river to take a look at the approach. Right, and uh, just one flyover, though. I'm surprised he did not loop back, as was anticipated, so that's why my theory is that he landed at one of the airports around here, maybe Bloomsburg. They still have a good mechanic shop there, so uh, maybe that is where well, he let's went. Get back to these moral imperatives you oh. feel with regards to your shopping. Well, you, wait, let me start this. Okay. So let me ask this. You, or let me ask you to tie two things together. You mentioned that businesses should have a moral imperative that going overseas for all of your products is not ideal, and that there, you That's know, right. businesses should have a moral imperative. But you're saying the customers sh should not. I'm saying that we should make it attractive, as attractive as possible, for people to manufacture things in America and buy the things that are manufactured here. That's what I'm saying. Well, whether that's done that. by government action, whether that's done by people like you who have a strong moral conviction that that's what should be done. I mean, when you go someplace, do you look for the Made in America label? Absolutely. Hard to find, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't get some things. But uh, you'd be surprised the things you can get. You could buy Danner boots that are made in America. You know, if you uh, you want to pay a little bit more, you can buy American-made clothing. Right, but look at, let's take buying a pair of shoes, for example. You have two pairs of shoes. One's made in America, and it pinches your toe. The other one's made in Taiwan, and it's very comfortable. Which one are you going to buy? Forget the price. Which one are you going to buy? Well, I guess I, I will try to buy a... Uh, a better product. I the mean, quality is important too. So I mean, right. you know, you want a quality yes. product manufactured in this country at a price you can afford to pay. Mm -hmm. Now, is that an oxymoron? 
Not really, no. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to check some news headlines. We have to hit, take a quick break, which we'll do. All right. Uh, we'll continue our competition. Cut me off. I don't care. Well, and we have more <laughs> emails to sift through, so we can get through those. All right. Uh, but you can ask your question. I, I'm sure the answer is no, so I'll be ready, <laughs> sure I'll be, I'll be ready to say it <laughs> after the break. But let's take a quick break. Geronninger Insurance toll-free line is wide open. We're talking about your moral imperative to shop in the USA and the moral imperative for businesses uh, to run themselves in such a way that uh, favors the U.S. doesn't disfavor other countries, but favors the U.S., and at the same time, our lawmakers could have could add to these incentives as well. Says Joe, I say as customers, uh, we just have a moral imperative uh, to uh, do the right thing when it comes to humans, uh, and some of the humans overseas might need a little assistance, too. Who knows? 1-800-795-9565, grounding your insurance toll-free line, Lenape Solar, email invest, get open on the market, over to koka.com. Our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. This is Tanya Diddy. If you've been wondering how you can save money and the environment for the future, then all you have to do is look to the sun. Let Lenape Solar enlighten you. Lenape Solar installs residential and commercial solar systems, each custom designed to meet your individual needs. And we're committed to buy American products. Making an investment in a solar system today is much more affordable than it was two to three years ago. The payback is much quicker. You can trust the experts at Lenape Solar to help enlighten you to a brighter tomorrow because we're committed to you and to our community. Call us at 286-1496 and start saving today. Here's something to think about. How do you know if your insurance is the right price? Have you ever had your insurance reviewed? Do you remember when it was reviewed? Hmm. And are you getting all the discounts you deserve? Let Groninger Insurance Agency give you a free, no obligation, second opinion on your auto, home, or business insurance. Give the Groninger Insurance Agency a call today at 570-473-8107. They're proud to represent the Erie Insurance Group. It's true. If you're not insured by Groninger Insurance, you're probably paying too much. Hi, I'm Megan from Zealand's Grove. And even though I'm 10, I know the number one cause of car crashes in the U.S. is distracted driving. Sunbury Broadcasting Corporation and Sealands Grove Ford want you to eliminate the distractions in your vehicle. Secure your passengers and equipment. Turn down the music and turn off the cell phone. This message brought to you by the stations of Sunbury Broadcasting Corporation, including News Radio 1070, WKOK, and Sealands Grove Ford, proud supporters of Susquehanna Smart Drive. News and interviews from your community every morning on WKOK Sunrise. Our idea for Greenway is 500 miles of interconnected parks, trails, and river towns. We all want to be watching our children. It's so important to do, but unfortunately our attention gets drawn in other areas. But active supervision, eyes on the child, is so important. News, sports, AccuWeather, and more every morning on WKOK Sunrise on News Radio 1070 WKOK and WKOK.com. Yeah, baby. Yeah, you wonder what bass adds to music. There it is. That's Mark Mahoney on bass, Joe McGranahan uh, playing the drums, and oh, I I'm am... sorry, I'm lead guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't hear a guitar. Well, that's why I'm taking a break right now. How are you? You're sitting down drinking the, the bottle of water back in the back row. You know, we do have my, some... My diet Pepsi. Oh, we have open phones right now. Feel free to give us a buzz. So 1-800-795-9565. We're talking about competition in Walmart and the moral imperative to do the right thing, whether you are an elected leader, a shopper, or a company. And we do have some news headlines. Uh, firefighters were called to a fire at the Middlesworth chip plant in Middleburg this morning. Emergency dispatchers say a fryer caught fire around 8 a.m. Volunteers were able to bring the 
friar under control quickly with little or no damage reported. No, not a Catholic so monk. What, what did they say? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Calm yourself down, friar. They were able to bring the friar under control. <laughs> he said, oh, bless me, I am sorry. <laughs> Stop burning, friar. Jeez. Oh, I knew this was coming as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as the word came out. I knew <laughs> your ears perked up. Uh, there was no damage to the building. No smoke was reported. No injuries. And firefighters were on the scene until around 9.15. How's so the friar doing? He's doing fine. <laughs> he's uh, boning up on his... Uh, um, <laughs> oh, I'm Whatever. Trying, trying to get Friarization. this pun working. Yes, he's going to have to re-robe because <laughs> he's, he's got smell of smoke on him. And the skies over in Northumberland next Tuesday will sound and look a little bit like World War II again when a B-17 flyover honors the late Ted Van Kirk. The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress Memphis Bell Bomber will also be on display and available for tours at the Sun Bay Airport. Donations will be accepted at that time or sent to the Riverview Cemetery. All of this to honor Dutch Van Kirk. The head of the state police says he hopes the U.S. Justice Department will drop their lawsuit that claims the agency's physical fitness standards for recruits discriminate against women. Commissioner Frank Noonan spoke Wednesday, a day after the federal government filed the lawsuit describing what it calls a pattern of discrimination. The lawsuit says nearly all male recruits pass the initial physical fitness tests, while 30 percent of women flunk it. The federal government says the tests aren't job-related and aren't consistent with business necessity. Noonan says the state police won't be bullied into changing or lowering their standards. He says, quote, there's only one kind of trooper. It's a trooper. There's no male troopers and female troopers. There's just troopers. And that it makes sense to have the same standards for men and women. The lawsuit asks a judge to order the department to hire women on an equal basis with men. That's what's wrong with our country right there. What, too many women troopers? No, I think more women troopers are probably a good idea. But, I mean, I think he's right. They have to be the same physical capabilities for both men and women. Now, if the government is right and their qualifications aren't job-related, then I agree with the government. But if they are job-related and if the physical attributes of a trooper, male or female, require that they be able to do certain things, then I, I don't think that's uh, fair to ask the women to have a lower standard. Well, how can you say that a physical test isn't job-related? I mean, that doesn't seem right well, for a trooper. They're they, on the front line of, you know, arguing and fighting with the perpetrators. You know, I, sometimes. I can't think of uh, I, I can't think of a good analogy physically where it would be uh, something that would favor a man and just deliberately exclude a woman. I mean, if a woman, women traditionally are not as tall or as strongly built. I mean, as men, they can train to be that. I think, in many instances. But if 70% of the women who take the test pass it, or, you know, then I don't think that's discriminatory. Do you? Well, but a higher proportion of men pass. I think that's where they use the data to But men are bigger and generally more physical than women in terms right. of strength. I mean, I, see very, I do see some female bodybuilders, but I don't see... You know, at the gym, I see probably an equal mix of men and women. And I, I don't go around looking at the weights the women are pulling compared to men. But in general, I've observed that they seem to be somewhat fewer with those 15-pound bars attached when women are pulling than when men are. And in a way, is this not like combat. We still favor men in combat, though women are going to be permitted in combat in the century ahead, most likely. For example, I've, women pilots are probably every bit as good as male pilots in terms of their reflexes and reactions, maybe even better in some regards. Women on ships, um, gunnery control officers, you know, things like that, positions on board a ship, probably. But individual fighting capabilities in the trenches, I would suspect that probably men have some advantages there that women don't. I would think so. 1-800-795-9565. What's your view on this audience? Uh, tell us, uh, sh- what what's the reality here? Uh, Joe and I both have our impressions, and I certainly think that uh, women should be uh, promoted and, and favored in hiring if there's been some discrimination. But uh, Trooper Noonan's, or well, I guess he's uh, um, Colonel. Colonel Noonan, thank you. His, re- oh, Commissioner now. Commissioner, okay. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Noonan's remarks, Colonel. we only have one trooper. And it's a trooper. And if you can pass the test, you can become one. Right. Or you can work, to, you can strive to become one. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I think that makes perfect sense. And likewise, if I'm being attacked by someone and I, and I hear the heartening remark that, don't worry, a trooper is on the way, and they're getting there as soon as possible, and he or she is going to be about five foot eight and about uh, 250 pounds and tough as nails, I will find that very comforting. <laughs> I, I would hope that he'd be a little taller than 5'8 at 250. 
250 pounds, but <laughs> and, or, maybe six, you know, six feet. <laughs> or, you know, according to the federal government, it's almost like we're saying, well, yes, we're sending a trooper, but it's a girl. And I don't think that's right. Well, I mean, if, if you're going to lower the standards, how much do you lower them? Is five foot two or 98 pounds, is that a good state trooper? Would you want that trooper coming to you, even though they... I wouldn't say lower the standards. I would just say correct them. If, if, if what the federal government says is correct, that this disfavors women who can do the job, then um, it's not lowering the standard. It's just adjusting it for the applicants. But one thing's for sure. The women who do pass can do the job. Right. Yeah, I haven't heard true. of I haven't never heard of a complaint of a state trooper showing up who was a woman and not being able to do the job. Right. And really the Pennsylvania State Police are the go-to agency for so much around here, such high standards and well, so much of Pennsylvania is their responsibility. I mean, they plus the fact I I think it's an issue of they need to be able to protect themselves because they do as you point out, they encounter a lot of bad people. They're in combat. Same thing's true with our municipal police. I mean, they are they literally you don't know what you're going to come up against, and you have to be physically prepared to handle it. I could see if I, I put a woman who was, let's say, or anybody who was uh, underpowered in terms of the capability of doing the job, let's say they were below average height, below average weight, and not of adequate physical strength to do the job, they get sent out on a call, somebody severely injures them or harms them or even kills them because of their the inequality of their physical capabilities versus the person they're up against. I could see a lawsuit coming from that, saying the taxpayers should have known, or you, we're suing you, city of Sunbury, or we're suing you, Shimoka Nambur, or whatever, because you put this person out there, and they weren't qualified, and now they're dead, so we're, our state's going to sue you for every cent you got. Would, could not a uh, smaller candidate, and there are some men who we're going to say just barely pass the test. How about that? Sure. Just, just to come up with a hierarchy here, uh, will not those individuals rely on their other weapons to help defend themselves or help others? You know, the taser and the But and should a policeman's and, first resort to protect himself be to draw a gun? No, absolutely not. They, I mean, they have a hierarchy of, uh, of you things know, they go through, right. escalating this stuff. But so. physical strength is one of them. Their physical abilities is certainly, I would think, the first thing they employ, the fact that they're taught how to intimidate and uh, to control situations. I mean, they go through an extensive amount of training in that regard. And even a small person, properly trained, can, you know, exert that moral authority, if you will, or that force to uh, get someone to comply. And a lot of times people don't attack policemen because they know that even though there's only one policeman in front of them, there are many more behind them who will be there in a flash if they're needed. You know, and plus the fact you, you assault a police officer, you're going to go away for an extended period of time. But still, your physical capabilities are a large part of being able to do that job. One eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five. One of our listeners sends us a note uh, related back to our conversation when we were discussing about uh, U.S. versus uh, foreign investment and business and competition and Walmart. Uh, it's, uh, is this sign? No, I don't see a signature anywhere. Anyway, it says we learned as children to look for the best value for the best price. I bought German and Japanese cars when the stuff made here was rusting out and fa failing at low mileage on the odometer. Now cars in this country are as good as I think in many cases better than the imports. My buying habits have changed. I think some things aren't still uh, are still better made abroad and I will continue to buy them until this country catches up in invention and quality. The U.S. can invent and build with the best of the countries in the world. I hope we get back to that, says Dan. So thank you. I did find the signature. Yes, you did. Right, one eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five. Talking about state police at the moment and competition uh, on the subject of state police by lowering the standards. Will that mean that criminals won't run away as fast or be as vicious if a female trooper shows up? Good point. All right. So yeah, I, I, it's a dilemma. Yeah, you're not hiring a police officer to be uh, so to take care of things that women can do one hundred percent equally as well as men. It's combat. Uh, Dave is on the line. Thanks for calling in, sir. Always glad to hear from you. You're on the mark. <laughs> oh, one more thing on back there. It's about you Mike again. I thought it was a different thing. <laughs> Hopefully, you're not going to use Sunbury Ford anymore. But that you're going to a Toyota dealer because on the mid-sized cars. Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord is 80% American-made versus a Ford Fusion, which is only 20% American-Canadian parts. <laughs> your full-size pickup, your Toyota Tundra, is 80% versus the F-Series Ford is only 60%. And the large SUVs, Toyota Sequoia is 80% versus an Expedition, it's only 50%. So as long as you're going to keep money here locally or into the USA, uh, hopefully you're not shopping at Ford. 
Yeah, the best way would be to, to do that. Where did you get your information? I have heard that before. Uh, the, All you have to do is plug in. And, well, what I plugged in was what percent of Ford's division is made in the USA, and it comes up and with the whole go. works. All right, fantastic. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I think, uh, as I pointed out, and as you have really helped us walk through this, it is complex. It's not just easy. I don't shop Walmart, or as Joe said, I do shop Walmart. You have to, there's a lot goes into it. And I, you well, look at the Ford Motor Company as a, for an American success story, starting with Henry Ford all the way up to today. You know, they are an American company. I know there was a, there was a little machine shop up in South Williamsport that employed about four people. And all they manufactured was like a left rear bumper bracket for a Ford pickup. Okay. And yeah. so, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's stuff scattered all over of what they do. It's not all made in one place or anything like that. But it's still, yeah, Ford's, Ford's you know, a great American story and everything. However, the times changed. Well, and, it, you know, if for moral reasons you can't shop at Walmart because of them buying their product, you know, selling Chinese stuff, then hopefully you're not shopping at Ford, that you're going to Toyota or Honda or somebody like that, which is going to be more American than the Ford dealer. Well, and, and, and another caveat to that, and this underscores what she says. It doesn't disagree with that. I'll never forget, on a canoeing trip, we stopped along the shore and we're enjoying a picnic with some folks, and we got into a conversation about buying American. And the guy had a Toyota truck in his uh, driveway, and he was retired. And, you know, we were talking about Buy American. I said, well, you bought a Japanese truck, and so your money went overseas. He says, nope, 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 sorry, I'm retired. Uh, Three-quarters of my pension is in Japanese automakers and Chinese manufacturers of very things, So, <laughs> or companies that employ uh, Chinese companies. So these are American dollars helping uh, American retirees like myself. So I basically Correct. bought this truck from myself. So, But whether we buy foreign... Thank you, Dave. Whether we buy Thank foreign you, or not... One other quick oh, thing. That if we lower the standards for the females for the state police, does this mean that criminals aren't going to run as fast or they're not going to be as vicious if it's the females? Trip? Oh, yeah, we just read that on the air. Did you send that in? Okay. Well, now listen to this. Now I'm going to ask you to stay. I was just about to get rid of you, but now I want you to stay because get another. Rid of <laughs> Pardon? Get rid of him? Well, how you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so I'm not as delicate as I could be. All right. Or polite. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, don't hang up, okay? Are you happy now? Uh, anyway, uh, this this emailer, and it is not signed, it says, the initial physical testing standards are very low for the Pennsylvania State Police. Anyone failing is truly out of shape and is not worthy of being a state police officer. I am 57 and could easily pass the physical testing, and my guess is Mark could also. And I agree with him. You are right. I probably could. The colonel is correct. The standards are not the problem. It is the applicants. Okay. Correct. Right. Yeah. When I was in the, when I was in the Air Force, we did that. That because there wasn't enough females to higher ranks. They started promoting females left and right. So here was guys that had been in the service for, say, 10 years, and they might only be an E5 and E6. All of a sudden, you have females that's only been in there three years, and they're E5s and E6s. Okay, they couldn't do the job, but they were promoted anyway because they were female. Well, then when it came time that somebody needed to be deployed for a mission, you couldn't deploy them, even though they were the ranking person, because they weren't qualified as far as abilities. And so when you start lowering, lowering standards just because of a, a, of a race or a sex, why it, it, it lowers Creates the whole problem, program. Right. Right. Well, there, there, are, Thank you, Dave. there are jobs that anybody would be incapable of filling. In other words, I might want to be an astronaut, but I couldn't pass the testing. I might want to be a brain surgeon, but my hand isn't steady enough. Or a enough. firefighter. Right. I mean, there are physical limitations to almost every job. And I would not want to have a job where I would put someone else's life in danger because I was physically incapable of performing my job as it should be performed. And I don't think anybody would. Would you? No, I think... Uh, I, I, mean, I, think I may want to be a is... state police officer, but I'm too old for it, and I'm out of shape. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I, I hope the state police win on this one, I'm, I'm afraid to say. Uh, Frank, you, are you there? With it? I thought that sounded like a hang-up sound. Frank hung up on us. Well, maybe he got <laughs> I guess he up. heard you say you wanted to get rid of Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dave. Dave, I'm sorry, Dave. Dave. Dave's gone. Sorry, Dave. All right, let's take a quick break. When we return, we are enjoying open phones. We have 20 minutes less left. Uh, deliberate dialers only at this point. You don't have to be super speedy, but deliberate would be ideal. 1-800-795-9565. We will be right back. Come on home to convenience. 
Come on over with style. Come on home to real savings. Service with the real smile. Hey, why search the newspaper classifieds when the best yard sales are at Kohl's Hardware? Come on home to Kohl's annual yard sale event for the best prices of the year on seasonal merchandise, overstock items, and closeout products. Show up early for bargain prices on grills, patio furniture, solar lights, pool toys, lawn and garden merchandise, and more. Smart yard sale shoppers know that each yard sale is unique, so be sure to shop all 11 Kohl's Hardware locations. And be sure to shop Kohl's yard sale event often, since the prices keep going down. Now is the perfect time to buy hand and power tools tools, fountains, hose carts, statuary, paint, automotive goods, houseware items, and more. Look for the big white tents at all 11 Kohl's hardware stores and shop the yard sale. We're right around the corner, right here in your hometown. Come on home to Kohl's. Come on home to Kohl's. Kohl's hardware. Come on home to Kohl's. Come to the races at Port Royal Speedway this Saturday night. It's the Living Legends Dream Race for 410 Sprint Cars. Honoring legends Lance DeWeese and Maynard Booth. See the Sprint Cars race in four main events, including a 35-lap feature worth $10,000 to win. A total of over $50,000 is up for grabs by the Sprint Cars. Don't miss it at Port Royal Speedway this Saturday night. Gates open at 4 for autographs, and racing starts at 7. And don't miss Twin 25s for sprints on August 23rd. Port Royal Speedway, just off Route 322 along Route 75 in Port Royal. Visit portroyalspeedway.com. Now is the time to go to your Kubota dealer and get a brand new Kubota M-Series tractor during Kubota's Gear Up and Go sales event. If you're thinking about a rugged utility tractor and the year-round comfort of a grand X-Cab, then a new Kubota has your name on it. With a smooth-running diesel engine and IntelliShift transmission, your Kubota dealer is the place to start. Right now, get your own Kubota M-Series tractor for zero down and zero percent financing for up to 60 months. So for a great deal, think orange at the Kubota Gear Up and Go sales event. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to Kubota.com. Zero down, zero percent APR financing for terms up to 60 months on selected equipment now through September 30th, 2014. Not available for rental national accounts or government customers. Zero percent APR, low rate financing, not available with instant rebate offers. Financing available through Kubota Credit Corporation USA subject to credit approval. Other exceptions may apply. For more information, call toll free 1-888-465-8268. It is trade deadline day today. What might the Pirates do? What have they already done? We'll talk to Pirates broadcaster Tim Never today on the Steve Jones Show, 3 to 5, News Radio 1070, WKOK. Welcome back to the KOK Live Telephone Talk Show. 1 800 795 9565 is aptly named the Groninger Insurance a toll free line. 1 800 795 9565. The Lenape Solar Email In Basket is appropriately named uh, not because it's on the market at KOK.com, but because it's sponsored by Lenape Solar. So that works out handily. And uh, we have the Sunbury Motor Company is our main sponsor. I am Mark Lawrence, subpar host of the show, and half the audience is saying, Oh, yeah, baby, you nailed that one. And above average in every way is Joe McGranahan, who has hasn't forgotten anything in the past uh, 26 years. Hasn't learned anything either. Well, but that's all right. If you, <laughs> you still have still quite a bit of knowledge. And uh, is the greatest grandfather the world has ever known, across from me. Uh, Mark Mahoney is the greatest producer in the universe. The webcam has a great image. Our sponsors are great. Uh, our callers are great. And our great topic right now. <laughs> He is uh, oh, going to be sorry. Uh, you're beginning to drive me nuts. <laughs> you're going to be grateful when this is over. I am. Uh, is uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. oh, we were about to talk to Rick from. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. Rick, you're on the mark. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I just wanted to weigh in on uh, the females. I just have caught the last 20 minutes of the conversation, but uh, just my observations from two tours in Iraq. Uh, while I was on active duty in the late 80s, early 90s, I was a 19 Delta scout. Uh, combat arms unit, of course, had opinions. There was no females in that. Um, and so my general military opinion was, you know, females belonged in certain units and certainly not doing that type of work. Uh, got out of active duty, went in the reserve, uh, called up for Iraq in a transportation unit, uh, of course, females in that unit. And I can tell you from more than 15 months boots on ground in Iraq, uh, the vast majority of the females that I served with uh, were nothing but top-notch. I would never uh, 
I would never doubt anyone's capabilities uh, in situations just based on their sex anymore. Uh, and that's, I can't even tell you how many encounters, uh, you know, running convoys, security for convoys. Uh, I think the type of uh, female that would apply to that type of job would uh, have the mentality and the uh, uh, emotional strength, the things that are needed to make the decisions and to, to handle that type of work. I also know from going into basic training in the military, most people are very weak. Um, they're, they're nowhere near what they would be coming out of training. I suspect the Pennsylvania State Police is the same. Uh, you know, whatever their level of conditioning is going out, going in, it's certainly going to be much superior coming out. And that's just my opinion. Should women be allowed in combat? I think uh, it should be... Uh, I think it should be open to them. I think there's certain standards should be met, but um, I think it's been proved successful in other countries, Israel, for example. Well, you're making the state police's position by saying that there are limitations that have to be considered. Right. Okay, we got you, Rick. Yeah, thank you well, very much. Yeah, well said. Go ahead. Another thought? Going once? No, I was going to say, I, I mean, there's obviously phys different physical standards, but I think the, the ones that would apply for that, uh, you know, there, there's common sense applications. You know, they're not going to in general meet the same number of push-ups as males. Yeah, there's there's differences for that, but in the, and I'm not a law enforcement officer, but there's, they don't generally run into combat type situations or fighting type situations. Most of the things that from what I have seen is uh, they need to be able to think on their feet and how to interact with people and pick up on cues with people. Okay. All right. We got you. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks much for Rick. calling. Rick. Very much appreciated. Uh, one eight hundred seven nine five nine five six five is our telephone number. I would love to hear from folks. We'll take our quick last break of the day, but we're enjoying open phones. We started out the first half of the show talking about competition and Walmart and why some folks love Walmart and they have absolutely positively everything they need. There are some women managers, and we know that there's some women managers around here because we've seen them, and we certainly are uh, want people to make the best use out of their hard-earned dollars, especially if they're in retirement or near it. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we're concerned about uh, some of the concerns that have been voiced about Walmart, and that's all we'll say about that. And right now we're talking about what was a uh, federal lawsuit filed against the Pennsylvania State Police uh, saying that the physical test discriminates against women, uh, but as uh, Frank Newland aptly stated yesterday, we have but one standard for troopers, and it is the Pennsylvania State Troopers standard, someone, male or female, who applies must hit that standard, and if you can't, uh, as uh, some 30% uh, of the women uh, have, who applied couldn't, uh, then you can't be one. You can't be a trooper until you come back in the right amount of physical condition. 1-800-795-9565, the Groninger Insurance toll-free line. Call us now. Lenape Solar email in basket is open. Email us at onthemarket.com, and our main sponsor is the Sunbury Motor Company. While looking for a vehicle, you know that if it sounds too good to be true, chances are it is too good to be true. You get the runaround, got to go from place to place. Well, you can just skip all of that and go straight to Sunbury Motor Company. Sunbury Motor Company has been satisfying more customers and selling more cars since 1915, so you know they've got it right. No offers that look good on paper or online, and then you get disappointed when you see them in person. Sunbury Motor Company offers a lineup few other auto dealers in the area can compete with. With the inventory of Ford, Hyundai, Kia, and Lincoln vehicles, there will be no problem finding the right vehicle that fits your needs and your budget. And the friendly, knowledgeable staff's ready and able to help you with everything from the test drive to the drive off the lot. See for yourself at Sunbury Motors. Sunbury Motors, Ford, Lincoln, Hyundai, in the North 4th Street Auto Plaza, Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors, Kia, Routes 11 and 15, Hummels Wharf. Look for them online anytime at sunburymotors.com. It'll be home to 942 bursts of laughter, a 16-pound black and turkey dinner, and the loudest burp on record. It will see its fair share of broken windows, broken bones, and broken hearts. 
But first, you have to find it. Start your home search at Zillow.com or on our family of apps. You can view millions of photos, browse historical pricing data, and even sign up for alerts when new homes hit the market. Zillow, find your way home. You need a website. Why not do it yourself? You know your business. With Wix.com, you can create a professional website all by yourself. It's easy and free. With Wix.com, you don't need to be a programmer. Just use the intuitive drag-and-drop website builder. There's no limit to how creative you can be. It's your website, your style. Show the world what you can do. Create your own stunning website today. Go to Wix.com. It's easy and free. News and interviews from your community every morning on WKOK Sunrise. U.S. Senator Pat Toomey. How can we affect some compromise to make a something move forward in Washington? My strong political views haven't stopped me from looking for common ground. That's what I have done consistently since I've been in the Senate. And that's what I think senators and House members ought to be doing. News, sports, AccuWeather, and more every morning on WKOK Sunrise. On News Radio 1070 WKOK and on the WKOK app. Welcome back to WKOK Live Telephone uh, Talk Show. It is entitled On the Mark. I am Mark Lawrence. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us. Joe McGranahan is here, and Mark Mahoney is uh, helping to run the controls. His main speciality here is information technology, computer, or responding to the call. Mark Mahoney! Which means my laptop's not working, which he can take care of. And we got Frank from Williamsport. You're on the mark, Frank. Good morning. I think the issue is in, in 1964 Civil Rights Act. And your and your point? Well, my point is is that whether or not in today's society under federal law is it legal? Uh, are we discriminating against women or not? Well, how do you consider it discriminating against women to require them to meet a physical standard that reflects that what they'll be asked to do on the job? I believe that the issue is. I believe there, the buddy? issue is being challenged uh, by the federal government and whether or not it's legal is the determination. I don't believe the, the, the physical test is the real issue. The issue is the fine line between whether or not the 1964 Civil Rights Act is being dis is, is showing is, is Pennsylvania in violation of that. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to look into it further. It's not just physical conditioning, in other words. It's overall promotion. All right, yeah, to be continued. But that would be another good, issue good there, Good right? questions, yeah. Thank you, They Frank. weren't sued for that. They were just sued on the physical standard. All right, the physical test. All right, uh, we appreciate everybody's calls. We have time for more calls. Uh, we have uh, read the sum total of the emails that arrived today, so uh, there's two left, but they are specifically directed at Kevin, who comes back tomorrow after his uh, two-day birthday celebration, and Ben, who returns tomorrow after after his uh, four days off during the week. So that's good work, baby, if you can get it. Well, go back to the standard again. I think that the key to it is, does the physical test required of all state police troopers, the initial test or the final outcome, as our other caller suggested, does it reflect real-world things that they're going to come up against and that they need to be prepared for? If you send somebody in underpowered to a situation with a big, burly guy, I think you're inviting them to try and see what they can get away with. So I think the person has to be in top physical condition. Either that or we have to accept the fact that police are going to resort more to the use of firearms just to control the people that they're coming up against. Okay. They're going to have to have some way, either tasers or guns, and to how, stop it. How interesting is it overseeing the police department, Mayor? Well, it's 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 interesting, always very interesting. But um, you know, in this case, it's more the physical standards. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to employ an officer, uh, and I don't think anybody in in any of the municipalities I'm aware of that have police departments would want to employ an officer who wasn't capable physically of doing the job without harming themselves or putting others in danger. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's a simple thing, a simple equation to me. You're putting somebody out on the street whose job it is to protect and to serve the public. They have to be physically capable of doing that, and I don't think that standard should be altered. I agree with with uh, Commissioner Noonan. It, it, it's one standard, and you either pass it or you don't. 
So you think a five foot two wussy guy like me shouldn't become a police officer? No, I don't. Okay. Well, plus the fact, I mean, you would just be so morally conflicted if you had to stop somebody. And oh, <laughs> come on. I, no, I would take an oath to uphold the laws of the municipality. Okay. And, so and would, come Pennsylvania. Would you go out and uh, if someone was violating the law, but in the interest of the environment, would you cite them? Yes. And if they were shopping at Walmart, I would arrest them. <laughs> you would arrest them. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're doing the wrong thing. You're violating my moral imperative. Right. Yeah, if you don't agree with me on all of these topics, and if you don't go to a Lutheran church, well, then we put you in hand. Handcuffs. <laughs> well, I don't want you in my police department because we have other people in our area who shop other places and belong to other faiths. But seriously, I mean, it, 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 the real key to me is whether or not the test or the testing or the standard is logical with respect to what's required of the job. And if it is, then you don't change that standard to let other people make it. You know, you just don't. All right. Well, that's what Commissioner Noonan argued. So hopefully he'll get his way. And he's right. All right. We thank everybody for calling in. Uh, we'll be out and about on Tuesday during the viewing of Ted uh, Van, Van Kirk, and uh, we hope you avail yourself of the fly over the B-17. It is going to be at the Sunbury Airport from, I believe, either 1 to 6 p.m. or noon to 6 p.m. It'll do the main flyover in the morning, and it flew over last night, in case you haven't heard. Uh, it was uh, quite the spectacle to hear. It's funny because, you know, you, everybody remembers the first person to do something. How many people remember the second? Hmm. Like, who was the pilot and the navigator on the second, and the name of the second airplane that dropped the bomb on Nagasaki? Do you happen to know that? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> was it not the Enola Gay, though? It was no, not the it was same a different, plane. different pilot, different air crew. I know that. It right. wasn't and, the same pilot and, and air crew. they're barely an asterisk. <laughs> right. In well, history. I mean, I'm sure somewhere it's recorded, but we, we haven't given them the. Uh, um, adulation, if you will, that we gave those brave men who did it first. And if, if these guys had failed, it would have been an entirely different story, but they didn't. Right. Yeah, that's what, it's funny. That's it was the, the common thread through two interviews we did yesterday is all the uncertainty associated with this. What if uh, enemy fire hit the plane? The Enola Gay had all of the... After the bomb was armed. <laughs> yeah, yeah after all, had all of its uh, gunnery equipment taken out in the interest of weight, so it didn't have any way to fight back. So Well, there were escort planes along with it. There was okay. a camera plane. I believe there was one, maybe at least one other plane. A fighter, a fight, fully something equipped. Something that would get them, get, you know, get them to the okay. target. Then the question came up, you know, what if this radar trigger had not worked accurately, or if yeah. just altitude had helped to set off the bomb? Well, they only thing? ever set one off before it, the one in the Nevada desert. The just test, one. Just one. And then they, and based on that, and they only had the two bombs. They had Tall Man and Little Boy. And um, if they had needed a third bomb, if Japan hadn't surrendered, it would have been quite a while before it could have been delivered. They yeah, would have had to right. manufacture it again. Fascinating history. We're ending up the same way we started with interesting yeah, uh, well, remarks. Tidbits. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in, Mayor. Oh, always happy to be here. Very See you Tuesday. You're not too far from your borough, but uh, you're you're out of your jurisdiction. So out of my element some days too. <laughs> right, but uh, you're in radios, and you've only been in that business for 60 years. So no, not quite. 50. 50. Yes. The webcam has been up and running. We invite you to watch the Cobble Together, together archive that Mark's going to put up at WKOK.com and on our YouTube channel, in which we invite you to check. Check that out. Sunbury Motor Company is the main sponsor of the On the Mark Show. SunburyMotors.com is their main website. And Lenape Solar sponsors the email in basket. LenapeSolar.com, their main website. And GroningerInsurance.com, the main sponsor of our toll-free line. Next up is the Dan Patrick Show. They're talking about deadline day, where if you're going to make a trade in baseball, you got to do it now. Uh, football preseason camps are out there, so fortunately the world is about to be right. We don't want summer to end, but we want football to start. So and we're going to make Mark run some of the football games, too, this fall. We have four I'm football sure games. Excited. <laughs> well, he, volunt he keeps saying yes at these meetings. He's, he's going to learn not to do that. But, yeah, so we thank Mark Mahoney coming upstairs and learning how to uh, push audio console buttons. He already understands the technology. Well, you managed perfectly. to fill two minutes with nothing. <laughs> well, the lines are stuck and busy, and the webcam's about to fade to black. The mayor's going to go work out at uh, what's the Planet name? Fitness. Champs. Planet, yeah, Fitness. Planet Fitness. Thank you. And uh, Mark's going to fix my laptop. So. All right. Big day. <laughs> so, you've been listening to On the Mark, the WKOK Live Telephone Talk Show, Dan Patrick. And then the Steve Jones Show is on this afternoon. Uh, Kevin has the day off, so you won't have Kevin to irritate you this afternoon during the Steve Jones Show on WKOK Sunbury. NBC News Radio. I'm Dirk Van. More Americans are looking for work. Stats this morning show the unemployment lines are getting longer.